Wow, Rita, don't know me talk about his story. Hear his life story and share this video. Let it go viral. Give me love and like and follow my page. Learn from this. God bless you. Bye bye. 2001, 2002, I stopped acting. I left the industry. I moved to London because it was a very dark period in my life. Like I said, I had these issues and, you know, I just fell out with some friends. I considered family and I just gave up acting for a while. I needed to get out of, you know, just leave that space for, for a minute. And then I moved to London and I gave up stardom. And then you won't believe it. This is something I've never told people before. But while in London, I was trying to make ends meet. I started working in a care home as a caregiver for adults with special needs. While some might view it as a step down, I don't. You see, taking care of others brought me joy and purpose at the time I needed it most. Because remember, I took care of my mother and my father when they were ill. Because I was alone with them. And when I say taking care of, I'm talking about really taking care of. Because you see... Um, when you get really ill, sometimes you become incontinent. So I took care of them at that level. So it was a no-brainer for me. My mother, my rock, my support system died. Hey, my people. Ah, our beautiful Rita Dominic, a very strong woman. She not even say she can't tell us what she go through for life. After we she take care of for me, what she couldn't teach, couldn't take care of the worst weather for the ticket of people we did need. My people so celebrity they say they pass on the voice about you where people know they know. They can let on a listing more. Don't forget to share this video. Let us know what you think of the conversation. We watch that down when she slipped away. You know, it's something that never really leaves you. I mean, she died in 2001, but just, I think about a week ago, I still thought about her, and the tears came again. It never leaves you, to be honest. You know, you get stronger, it gets better, but it never leaves. Well, um, it was just unbearable for me, because for me, I felt like she was supposed to be here, celebrating with me, watching me chase my dreams. I mean, she was part of this process, you know? She made sure each time I go to school and come back, I'll do my homework, and then she'll prepare me for um, children's variety programs where I go to perform during the weekends. So she was very, very instrumental to what, who I am today, you know? And then, um, after that, I was in a bad place. I felt like there was no reason to keep going on, you know? I remember being on the plane, going back to Lagos after she had passed, but she passed in my state where I'm from, Imo State. And then we had to go to Lagos and you know get necessary things to come back and plant the burial. Now I remember being on that plane and to be honest, it was such a turbulent flight, but I did not feel it because I wanted it to crash. I wanted I was praying that I want this plane to crash so I can see my mother and be with my mother again. That's how I felt. You know? And then that's that, that it's it's a very empty feeling anyway. Now you see, I'm the youngest in my family, and while I was still in secondary school, my older siblings had all moved back to the UK because they were all born there. I was only one born in Nigeria, anyway. That's, you know, that's a story for another day, <laughs> you know. After our mother's funeral, we all returned back to their lives abroad. Then, life for me took a turn for the worst, both emotionally and financially. My father's health declined because, you know, when a couple, you know, when they're very close and one dies and affects the other one. I think my father actually stopped living with him and mother died, you know. So he became ill, his health declined, and then, yeah, my siblings managed to move back to the UK and I was now all alone in Nigeria. I found myself losing faith in the slow growth of Hollywood, waiting months between jobs for like an eternity. And then I lost some people who I whom I thought were friends. Very close friends. In fact, some friends I considered family. It was just a very turbulent time in my life. I don't want to dwell too much on that stuff period, but it led me to hitting rock bottom in Lagos. And when I say rock bottom, I mean rock bottom. I became homeless. I was squatting with people for a stretch. And when I say squatting, I'm talking about three, four people in the room. 
with it was first space and I was staying there, you know. Um, choose your friends wisely is one advice I always give to young girls in my industry. It's very important to choose who, you know, there's something that I said, choose your friends. It is very important to have friends who share the same vision goals with you, you know. People who your visions are aligned and people who bring the very good energy because look who, the sort of energy you put out in the universe is the sort of energy you receive. That's something I always tell people. So you have to be very careful the sort of energy you surround yourself with and also the sort of energy you're putting out there in the universe. Well, eventually my siblings found a way to get me out of Nigeria. And then I lived with my brother and his family for a while in London. And gradually I you know, started getting myself together. Now, during that process, I put my dreams of stardom on hold. Many of you don't know, but in 2001-2002, I stopped acting, I left the industry. I moved to London because it was a very dark period in my life. Like I said, I had these issues of, you know, I just fell out with some friends, I considered family, and I just gave up acting for a while. I needed to get out of, you know, just leave that space for, for a minute. And then I moved to London and I gave up stardom. And then you won't believe it. This is something I've never told people before. But while in London, I was trying to make ends meet. I started working in a care home as a caregiver for adults with special needs. While some of my views as a step down, I don't. You see, taking care of others brought me joy and purpose at the time I needed it most. Because remember, I took care of my mother. And my father when we were here, because I was alone with them. And when I say taking care of, I'm talking about really taking care of. Because you see, um, when you get really ill, it's sometimes becoming incontinent. So I took care of them at that level. So it was a no brainer for me. Okay, fast forward to 2003. I saved, you know, some money to return to Nigeria to get my stuff and just. Finally moved, you know, just moved, relocated to, to London. Nollywood was now beginning to thrive. In fact, they were now calling it Nollywood. We used to call it Africa, Africa film industry or Nigeria film industry at the time. And then some of the producers were urging me to stay. I felt it was risky. I didn't want to lose my job. And also, I had started a, a drama school in London. You know, I had just paid the fees before I came to Nigeria holiday. You know, right before I went to Nigeria and holiday, I keep thinking, I'm in Nigeria, you know. And then um, one day, Genevieve Inachi calls me. You all know Genevieve, right? Yes! <laughs> you know, so Jenny calls me a few days before I was to go back to London, and she said, oh, I'm giving you a number to a producer for the film. And I'm like, ah, you know, I'm going back. And she's like, well, just listen to what he has to say. She was one of the people that advised me to stay, actually, to stay back and go back to London. 